Good afternoon, fellow travelers. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your daily dose of headlines you may have missed for Monday, January 22nd, 2018. You give us 20 minutes, and we'll give you headlines that aren't dominated with fear porn. We'll give you headlines of awareness, hope, and action. And to the title of today's show is Crypto Nation versus Crypto Regnation. You can get show notes at isheadlines.com. And on this show, Crypto Nation versus Crypto Regnation. Crypto Mesh, Crypto Cops, League of Women Gun Grabbers, Planned Murderhood, and more on this episode of headlines you may have missed. And now, here is your 20 minutes of headlines you may have missed. Switzerland comes out against world regs on cryptocurrency. So, it seems that Switzerland is one of the countries that could throw a monkey wrench into the plans of nation states like Germany that dream of a worldwide governance body that will keep cryptocurrencies at bay. Now, while Germany and other authoritarian nations like China and uh, it seems even America are scrambling to figure out how to control this expression of self-reliance of liberty that is cryptocurrency, Switzerland is looking to take advantage of the technology, all but declaring itself a crypto nation. And this is from Bitcoinist.com. So ahead of a potential crypto G20 summit, which could result in a wave of regulatory action, Switzerland has emerged in full support of the technology as voiced via economics minister Johann Schneider Ammann. The affluent municipality of Zug has become the home for numerous blockchain companies, including the Ethereum Foundation, according to reports. A translation from an address given by the minister indicates willingness for expansion from this hub of blockchain tech to the rest of the country. BlockMesh, developing mesh networks where users pay each other through crypto. BlockMesh is, uh, well, released a statement about its ongoing developments of a mesh telecommunication system designed to work outside of cell towers. The technology relies on peer-to-peer -peer mesh networks. Block Mesh will use a blockchain to enable users to pay one another through cryptocurrencies for their services. Now, now I don't know a lot about Block Mesh as far as how viable it is. This is an ICO, by the way. Uh, I don't know how viable it is and where it is in terms of actually delivering on its promises, but I've heard this concept before. And the general concept, which is what I'm really promoting here, of developing mesh networks using peer-to-peer -peer payment for bandwidth services through cryptocurrency, whether Block Mesh again, successfully ends up doing this or not, is an exciting tool that will tilt the balance of power towards individuals and free associations, which anyone who visits iState recent, uh, right, iState TV, TV regularly knows that's what we're all about. And it'll also be an effective non-gov response, by the way, to the repeal of net neutrality. Block mesh developing. Ah, I put that up twice. I'm going to go to the next headline. Sorry about that. Spain vows no tolerance on potential return of Puigdemont as Catalan president. Madrid has sent the message to Catalonia. If you try to reinstate Carlos Puigdemont, the exiled former president of Catalonia, you could expect another round of the boot to the neck. A government spokesperson has made it clear that Spain will not tolerate Puigdemont as president of Catalonia. Spain rules out Puigdemont becoming Catalonia leader again. Catalonia's former leader, Carle Puigdemont, will not become the Spanish region's chief again, government spokesman Inigo Mendez de Vigo said in an interview, adding that the government would continue to directly rule Catalonia as long as necessary. U.S. Treasury forming crypto cops. 
Now that they've smelled dollars in amounts that have reached billions, the IRS is suddenly very interested in developing ways to get their pound of flesh from the exploding cryptocurrency market. The U.S. Department of Treasury has announced plans to develop tools and practices to effectively carve out a slice of the exchange of value between others. This is from Coindesk. The U.S. Department of Treasury is ramping up its enforcement against the potential for money laundering and criminal financing through cryptocurrencies, improving, quote, anti-money laundering combating the financing of terrorism, AML, CFT rules, is one part of regulating the evolving threat of cryptocurrencies, according to Undersecretary for Terrorism and Financial Intelligence, Sigil Mandelker, who testified before the Senate Banking, Housing, and Urban Affairs Committee or on, on Wednesday. And of course, he sits under the man that I have deemed the Bitcoin czar. No, I don't mean that in a friendly way. I'm talking about the Steve Munchen, however you pronounce his name, the Treasury Secretary and his, his ongoing war against crypto. League of Women Voters supports anti-gun bills and NBC reporters shills for them. I know. Shocking, right? So, if you thought that the League of Women Voters was some sort of neutral entity designed to merely encourage women to engage in a political process, well, you'd be wrong. They're just another progressive state organization claiming to represent all women, and all women apparently want gun control. So the League of Women Voters in Charlottesville, Virginia, is coming out in support of the newly elected gun-grabbing Governor Ralph Northam and his anti-human, anti-liberty, anti-gun assault on human freedom through, quote, gun control. And the article that we will excerpt from is from NBC29, and it was written by Emmy Friedman. And Emmy Friedman does the, the tried-and-true tactic of the state media, which is present an article in a matter-of-fact, straight news format while you interject phrases in a way that nudges your readers towards the, the aggregate belief that you want your readers uh, to hold. You'll have to go to isheadlines.com and, and read more of, about exactly what I mean about this woman who who has demonstrated an ex demonstrated an excellent skill and a commitment to to doing the work of representing the the state through media. Planned Parenthood stands against saving babies born during failed abortions. So, so it seems that Planned Parenthood finds itself in the awkward position of having to stand against the life of a newly born child. The U.S. House is introducing a bill that required doctors to attempt to save the life of a child if it is born during an attempted abortion. I don't know all the details of the bill, and maybe there are some catches there that go beyond the intention of the bill. That would be really surprising if, if, if somebody would do that. But, but just addressing this at the surface level, what it looks like, uh, Planned Parenthood is claiming that the bill politicizes health care and that health care should not be politicized. Well, darlings... When the government, the coercive association that sends you half a billion dollars every, dollars every year from monies collected from millions of people, I use the word collective, collected euphemistically, most of whom don't even approve of Murder, Inc.'s business plan, and, that, and that's Planned Parenthood, by the way, to you and I, you can hardly pretend that health care is anything but political. So here's a here's a word of advice to all you folks that ever you ever pull out the let's not make it political argument. Here's a clue. If you want to remove politics from healthcare or any other thing that you're that you're arguing for or against, uh, any anything that affects human action, remove the state from healthcare. Remove the state 
from the action that you're describing. Because the only way to depoliticize is to call for the separation of health and state. And I'm going to expand that and say, to call for the separation of human action and state. Probably not going to happen anytime soon. But uh, aren't you supporters of Obamacare there? Yeah. So shut up, Planned Parenthood. Your hypocrisy, as well as your vulgarity, is showing. Could italexit? I'm, I coined that phrase. Maybe somebody else has already did it and I didn't see it. But I didn't see it. So I'm going to say I coined the phrase. Could italexit come? after Italy, elec Italy election. So Tom Parfit of the Express UK decided to write an alleged straight new piece. This is another example of the straight new pieces, news pieces that are not, uh, uh, with, with a rather, quote, alarming title. The title is EU warning how Italian election could devastate Brussels and tear Eurozone apart. Ten but minutes. the title... I only got 10 minutes, but the title immediately makes me cheer for the exact opposite result his article is intending to frighten me to not support. The Italians have a problem from the EU standpoint. There seems to be a strong anti-EU political movement emerging in Italy that could produce an italexit. I, I, I think that's what they'll call it. I'm all for secession, as anyone who visits iState.tv regularly knows. Right down to the level of seeing 7 billion-plus states emerge. Hence the title of our site, iState. You get it? So, Tom, thank you for bringing to our attention something we, that is, we who support individuals and free associations over coercive associations, should be cheering on and even support. Let's hear it for italicsit. SCOTUS to consider letting states tax out of state online retailers. Isn't that great? If you can't beat them, tax them. That's what some hardcore coercive association supporters hope will happen at the Supreme Court, uh, or as the Supreme Court considers whether the People's Republic of Massachusetts stand can collect theft dollars from out-of-state online retailers. And this is from Salem News. The U.S. Supreme Court is taking up a decades-old issue over whether Massachusetts and other states can collect sales tax from out-of-state online retailers. Some business owners here say a court decision could decide whether they stayed open. This is really a do-or-die moment for the state's struggling brick-and-mortar retailers. So this is uh, brick-and-mortar retailers who are basically saying, "Listen, man, we have a, uh, you know, we're we're being burdened by Massachusetts taxes and these uh, out-of-state uh, online retailers are not being burdened. It's uh, it would be like if 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 the slaves." Uh, uh, you know, pre-Civil War, the the, the slaves uh, looked looked around at everyone else and said, "Hey, it's not it's not fair." Instead of fighting for their own freedom, they're going to say, "Hey, everybody else should be slaves too." That's pretty much what's 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 going on here. And the fact that uh, somebody somebody actually wrote this article and didn't see the insanity of what it is that they're they're actually reporting on without losing their mind. Uh, that tells you all you need to know about Salem News. Hint, it's, it's walking hand in hand with the state. Facebook hinting news feed changes in the form of trusted site rankings. So it seems Facebook really wants to assure that people get it right when it comes to taking in and sharing news. And they intend on more aggressively assuring that people get it right, as defined by Facebook. So their latest suggested newsfeed change will come in the form of ranking trusted sites. Now I'm betting that their system of ranking, if it becomes obvious that sites are being ranked as trusted that seem to fit the progressive state agenda, yeah, no kind of thinking that's what's going to happen. That the rankings will serve to let many know what sites not to trust. Hence, uh, that would be the ones that Facebook deems as trustworthy. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know. People surprise me. 
I, 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 I think it's a pretty good bet, though, that, 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 that that's what's going to happen. China's sex bot revolution. Got to have a little levity thrown into our news here, along with uh, our awareness, hope, and action. I didn't add that to our slogan. I'm not going to, but I could. Awareness, hope, action, and lulls. So this is the lulls. China could be opening up in more ways than one to sex. You see what I did there? That was, that was clever, I think. Thanks to the infusion of sex robots, and it just might change the very way China views sex. And this is from, from Vice. So when it comes to sex, China has always been a very conservative country. The government demands that cleavage be censored on TV. That's terrible. And still bans women from eating bananas suggestively on camera. <laughs> but the life-size sex dolls with artificial intelligence and Yo-Yo Liu's company showroom tell a different and very strange story. So Five minutes. I only have five minutes, folks. Last year, there was a very big market for dolls. Liu... General manager of WM Dolls told us on a recent factory tour that has told Vice, every year it grows by about 30%. Her Guangzhou-based company makes 30,000 internet-connected sex bots a year and controls 20% of the Chinese sex doll market. If you want to do a, 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 a quick uh, math uh, there, then that's uh, that's uh, thirty thousand times five. That's one hundred and fifty thousand sex bots a year being produced in China. Uh, she goes on to say they like different kinds of uh, a female anatomies in addition to different body types. Auto parts printed right at the dealership. It's coming. It's long been my dream that I could go to a car dealership and order my car highly customized. I might, for instance, order a customized, modernized 57 Chevy. Well, we're not quite there yet, but we're a little closer with dealerships developing 3D printing to create parts on demand right there in the shop. And this is from precisionfarmingdealer.com. 3D printing will grow. Okay. Could 3D printing revolutionize the parts and service department in a dealership of tomorrow? 3D printing, also known as additive, whatever, I'm not going to read it, refers to the process used to create a three-dimensional, okay, I don't need a two, two, tutorial on 3D printer. So it's already being used in a number of, of, of industries. So the one thing about exponential growth is it is sublinear in its early stages. In other words, people dismiss exponential technologies because at early stage, the growth rate is actually sublinear. A good example of a product that had exponential growth is the smart smartphone. So, okay, uh, it, they're basically explaining how 3D printing is going to expand. And one of the places that it's going to expand will be in places like uh, car dealerships. You know, instead of uh, having to order for that uh, rare part, uh, checking checking the junkyards. You won't have to check the junkyards. Man, it's going to do it. Oh, it's going to take the junkyards. Gerbs! It's going to take their gerbs! They don't create a whole bunch of new gerbs. So we're going to get to U.S. warship challenges China's South Sea claims. So what China's doing is they're building all of these islands, man-made islands in the South China Sea, and then they're claiming the territory and they're claiming the waters around the territory in an effort to to basically claim hegemony over the Two South minutes. China Sea. It's not that the it's not it's not just the United States that's not happy about this. Uh, all the other countries in the region are also like, dude, dude, you're like hogging up crap. So China has accused the United States of sending a warship without permission into what it said was its territorial waters in the disputed South China Sea, adding that it would take necessary measures to safeguard its sovereignty. So he, at the end here, the, what the U.S. vessel did violated China's sovereignty and security interests, but the safety of Chinese vessels and personnel who were in this relevant waters for official duties under grave threat. You read more at uh, Japan Time which is where this article came from. So now let's go through all of the headlines that we didn't quite get to. We have 
Auto parts. Wow, I did that one. U.S. I did that one. Belgian cops to use AI to solve crimes. Ethiopia. One minute. With, I only got one minute. Ethiopia to partner with Somaliland. Indian banks going after Bitcoin exchanges. Germany pursues friendly ties with Turkey. Merkel still might emerge with new coalition. And then more headlines. DNA nanobots and designer humans coming to a body near you, creating hydrogen with the power of 30 the seconds. Turks threaten EU with another wave of migrants, refugees, the promise and threat of blockchain to the music industry. Washington state gets slate of new anti-gun bills. EU. Social media companies accelerate hate speech removal. Ten seconds. Self-regulation push. Twitter to tell 67 million plus users they were had by the Russians. So that's it, folks. Uh, that's all we have for the headlines you may have missed. If you would like to read more about the stories we covered today, just go to isheadlines.com and find the show notes for January 22nd, 2018. As always, remember, those who need to control thoughts need to control news. Until tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is Paul Gordon of iState.tv saying... Have a great rest of your day, fellow travelers.